Hello, what's up mga kabirds? I'm so amazed and grateful of your support for the likes, comments, and the 1,000 subscriptions on my channel to the people in the community and to the persons who really helped me to promote my channel. Thank you so much. I owe you a lot. So if you are new here, you can subscribe, like, and make some comments on what topic you want me to discuss. You can visit my channel and check on some of my videos and in this video i'm going to discuss the combinations of symptoms or a syndromes considered for congestive heart failure the risk factors diagnostic test and some of the criteria in refraining harm from simple manifestations to advanced signs and symptoms and the stages of congestive heart failure once again thank you i'm your nurse on duty signing in Okay, let's discuss some of the pathologic disorder that may result for congestive heart failure. As I discussed in the pathophysiology of congestive heart failure, it is a manifestations or combinations of factors, a syndrome causing for heart failure. Single risk factors would be enough but a combination of factors or set of manifestation increases the risk. First of the pathologic disorder is the coronary artery disease, or we know this as CAD. It is caused by the plaque buildup in the wall of the coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart. So in the presence of plague, it is made up of cholesterol, which is present for patients with hyperlipidemia. This cholesterol deposit in the arteries or coronary arteries that results narrowed arteries may limit heart's supply of oxygen resulting in the weakened heart muscle. Heart attack, also called as myocardial infarction, it happens when the part of the heart muscle doesn't get enough blood. The manifestation is what we call ischemia. There is an insufficient oxygen caused by the presence of the plaque buildup in the coronary arteries. And later, it may cause necrosis or death of the tissues. If there is a death of the tissues, it may lead to myocardial infarctions or heart attack. Even in the presence of ischemia, the heart will not be able to pump well. I discussed this in the myocardial infarction video and you can check first the pathophysiology of congestive heart video so that you can understand during the discussion. Heart valve disease or having this heart valve that doesn't work properly raises the risk of heart failure. Heart valve disease are problem affecting one or more of the four valves in the heart. We know that heart valves open and shut with each other to keep blood flowing in the right direction. But the problem with the heart valve has three possible causes. I call this mnemonic as RAS. First, letter R is what we call regurgitations or it doesn't close properly, causing for the backward flow of blood through the defective heart valve. Letter A is for atresia, doesn't have a proper opening, or there is a presence of stenosis. So that is RAS. High blood pressure, or known as hypertension, increases the force of the blood through arteries and can damage artery movement. Put a strain on the heart and makes it harder for it to pump blood into the circulation. So what will happen? The heart is trying to compensate the necessary cardiac output that is being required. Part, if in a long period of time that the person is having hypertension through compensatory mechanism it is expected that the left ventricle or this is what we call ventricular hypertrophy in order to compensate the necessary or required cardiac output arrhythmias or irregular heartbeat these abnormal rhythms especially if they are very frequent or fast it weakens the heart muscle and causes heart failure. It is because of we have what we call systole and diastole, the relaxations and the contractions of the heart. When the heart beats too rapidly or it is the irregular and often rapid heart rhythm or arrhythmias that can lead to blood clots in the heart. That effect is causing for the risk factor for stroke, heart failure and other heart related complications. Congenital heart disease, uh, some people who develop heart failure were born with problems that affect the structure or functions of the heart. 
This congestive heart failure are present at birth and can be affect the structure of the baby's heart and the way it works. So the blood flow is affected if the heart is having a small hole in the heart or in the severe form, presence of or missing or poorly formed parts of the heart. Diabetes. How this diabetes may cause heart failure? High blood sugar can damage blood vessels and can lead to chronic inflammations which can stress the heart and blood vessels and increases the risk of heart disease. Some medications that may affect or cause this type of pathologic disorder are some medications of diabetic patients. But please don't stop taking this medication. You need to consult with your attending physician or you ask the, your doctor if you need to change or make any changes. Certain medications that may also lead to risk for heart failures includes the NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, certain anesthesia medications to treat high blood pressure, or chemotherapy medication for abnormal heartbeats, nervous system disease, mental health conditions, anti-inflammatory disease and infection so we need to check the adverse reactions and we need to check early signs and symptoms of congested heart failure alcohol use drinking too much alcohol can weaken the heart muscles and leads to heart failure sleep apnea the inability to breathe properly while you sleep may result to low blood oxygen level and increases the risk of irregular heartbeats both of these problems can weaken the heart. Smoking or using tobacco. Using tobacco increases risk of heart disease and heart failure. Research have shown that smoking increases heart rate, tightens major arteries, and causes irregular heart rhythm, all of which makes the heart work harder. Nicotine is a contributory factor to the hardening of the arterial walls, which in turn, it may lead to heart attack. Another one is obesity or people who are obese have a higher risk of developing heart failure. Why? Because of the compensatory mechanism again. It requires more blood supplies and nutrition to their bodies, which causes an increased blood pressure, excess weight, and an accomplish in the development of heart problems. The last one, but not the least, the viruses. Certain viral infections can cause damage of the heart muscles, causing inflammation and disrupting the electrical pathways that signal the heart to beat properly. One good example for this is myocarditis. Next is the diagnostic test. Ultrasound or echocardiography is commonly used to support clinical diagnostic tests of heart failure. This modality uses ultrasound to determine the stroke volume. We know the stroke volume, the amount of blood in the heart that exists in the ventricles and particularly with each heartbeat. And trying to assess also the end diastolic volume or ADV, then this is the total amount of blood at the end of diastole or relaxation. But we can also identify valvular heart disease and assess the state of pericardium. Chest X-ray, a useful measure of cardiothoracic ratio, which is the transverse diameters of the heart, which compared with the thoracic cage. There is a process of increased cardiothoracic ratio indicating for a presence of enlarged heart or cardiomegaly. Angiography is the X-ray imaging of blood vessels, which is done by injecting contrast agent into the bloodstream through a thin plastic tube or catheter, which placed directly in the blood vessels. The difference between X-ray and angiography is the injections of contrast agent in order to visualize blood vessels in the lungs or in the coronary arteries. While the ECG may be used to identify the arrhythmias, ischemic heart disease, right and left ventricular hypertrophy, and the presence of conduction delay or abnormalities. Blood tests routinely performed which include electrolytes, trying to check for the electrolyte imbalance and particularly presence of sodium and potassium. Kidney functions and liver functions test, the thyroid functions test, CBC and often the C-creative protein 
if infections is suspected. An elevated brain, natriuretic peptide or BNP is the specific test indicative of heart failure. For diagnostic of symptomatic heart failure and left ventricular systolic dysfunction. And it can be used to differentiate other causes of dyspnea. If myocardial infarction is suspected, various cardiac markers or what we call biomarkers, which is known as troponin I, N, and T, is used. Assess for the sodium, as I mentioned before, or presence of hyponatremia or low serum sodium concentration is common heart failure. And those vasopressin levels are usually increased along with renin. And renin, responsible for the secretion of angiotensin, it mainly leads for the conversions of angiotensin 2 and catecholamines to compensate for the reduced circulatory volume due to inadequate cardiac output. This leads to increased fluids and sodium retentions in the body. So what will happen? So there is an imbalance. The rate of the fluid retention is higher than the rate of sodium retentions in the body. This phenomenon causes hyperbolemic hyponatremia or low sodium concentrations due to high body fluid retention. I would like to include the framing harm criteria, which requires the simultaneous presence of at least two of the following major criteria or, or one major criterion in conjunctions with two of the minor criteria. So it is being divided in minor or major criteria. We'll start with the minor criteria. Minor criteria includes an abnormality fast heart rate or arrhythmias more than 120 beat per minute. Nocturnal cough up indicates that there is pulmonary edema. Difficulty on breathing with physical activity is the initial manifestation of congestive heart failure. Pleural effusions, this is the start when there is a retention from the left ventricle, right atrium, there is a buildup of fluids in the lungs and the decrease in the vital capacity by one-third from the maximum recorded and presence of liver enlargement and bilateral ankle edema. This is a manifestation of right side failure because the first few manifestations that I mentioned is more on left congestive heart failure. How about the major criteria? It includes the enlarged heart. It indicates that for a long period of time, the heart is trying to compensate, so it is positive in the result of X. A presence of S3, third heart sound, or what we call gallop, is an indicator or one of the pathognomonic symptoms of congestive heart failure. Acute pulmonary edema or circulatory overload. The episodes of waking up from sleep, gasping of air, it is what we call orthostatic nocturnal dyspnea. Presence of crackles or rails, which is associated with the cut. Central venous pressures is more than 16 cm of water. Normal range of the CBP is 8 to 10. Jugular pain distension, it is the hallmark of right congestive heart failure and positive abdominal jugular test. Stages of congestive heart failure is, it is being divided into four stages from high risk of developing heart failure to advanced disease. In stage A, people at high risk for developing heart failure in the future but no functional or structural heart disorder and stage B, a structural heart disorder but no symptoms of any stages. Stage C, previous or current symptoms of heart failure in the context of underlying structural heart problem but managed with medical treatment. Stage D, advanced disease requiring hospital-based support, heart transplant or palliative care. Thank you for watching. Sana marami po kayo natutunan. You can check some of my videos. You can visit and support my channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm your nurse on duty. Until next time.